I'm back in the woods. And it feels good. Real good. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. Well, today I'm out poking around the woods. Restrictions have been eased a little bit where I live. They're still encouraging folks to not travel too far. I'm still in my own county. And I anticipate not leaving the county for a little while anyway. But I'm out in the woods with my camera just uh, looking for something to photograph. It just feels good to be out in the woods. Today the film I'm shooting is T-Max 100. I got a couple rows left of that. I kind of like to get through. I think in the future I'll be moving over to Delta 100. But today we're doing T-Max 100. Not sure what I'm going to find out here. I've actually never been in this area much, so it's kind of nice to just kind of get out and explore. There's still a lot of places, even in my county, that I really haven't looked at much. So today, I'm somewhere where I haven't been. I'm on this viewing deck. Got some nice clouds moving across the trees and across the uh, canyon here, so there might be a potential for a nice atmospheric shot. I can get a clear enough view through these trees, shoot that hillside another on the, across the way there. I like to shoot some of those clouds kind of moving over the trees or the forest. Just not sure I can get in a, a clear enough view to make that shot. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, I'm having a hard time getting a clean view of what I want to photograph. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Probably go ahead and make a frame somewhere in here. Oh, there's my first frame. So I found a kind of a detail shot of this fern, some water on it, a lot of crisscrossing lines. It's kind of a kind of nice uh, pattern shot. Just kind of caught my attention as I was coming coming down the trail. There's a lot of new growth out here, a lot of spring growth. It's kind of nice to uh, get some detail shots, take advantage of that.
I've made it known on a few of my videos that I'd love to have a large format camera. And pardon me, really would love to have a large format camera or a 4x5 for landscape photography. But the practical part of me says I should be filling out my medium format kit before I start going up another format. If I'm spreading my gear pretty thin and having three different formats, I'm not sure that's going to accomplish making better photographs. I'll have big, bigger film, but if I don't have as many focal lengths to choose from, I don't need a lot. There are a few missing from my bag right now. So I could either start spending money on large format with one and then have one or two lenses, or I could have a wider array of focal lengths to pick from in my medium format kit. That looks like I'm at the end of the road here. Just uh, too thick to bushwhack this. I was hoping for a little game trail along the creek. Maybe I should... I might try the other side. I don't know if it's any better. But maybe I'll go back down and just... Uh, Take a shot. There's, there's some nice moss covered rocks in this creek and see if I can uh, utilize some of that. But I'm, I'm at the end of the road right here, so this trail, this, uh, <laughs> this bushwhacking has become fruitless, so I'm gonna head back to the direction. I'm not in love with this composition. I'm going to take the frame anyway. There's a lot of work just to get over here. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and take the picture. I'm not one of those photographers that has to have a waterfall on every screen. I actually kind of think waterfalls are a bit cliche. And I still photograph them. Sometimes it's just nice to have a, a scene. That's kind of what this is. It's just still a little bit busy for my taste. But I'm gonna t I worked too hard to get over here, so I'm gonna take a picture. Worked really hard on this creek. I couldn't, couldn't find anything that I could photograph. I made a few images. Nothing, uh, nothing that's really knocked my socks off. But sometimes you just take the easy shot because it's really the only shot. <laughs> it just feels good to be outside. It just feels good to be out in the woods. I'm all wet from hiking through the through the brush from the, from the bushwhacking. That's all right. Oh, what a beautiful spring day. It might just be that I haven't been out that much. I'm appreciating it more. get away from the creek so I can talk. I did a three shot pano of this creek scene. It's the same creek I was on upstream a little bit. I uh, 
came downstream and found another section that I kind of like. Well, here's a waterfall for you. <laughs> I actually kind of like the two different motions, the river going this way and the waterfall dropping into it. Kind of creates two different um, directions of motion. So there should be some interest coming down. And then I think having that water kind of blurred in the, in the foreground going horizontal to the frame might be kind of an interesting composition. Yeah, we'll see. So I found my way into, into this empty campground and I was drawn to these dogwood. They're, uh, it's, it's been raining so the, the blooms are starting to uh, kind of come apart. But um, just the end of the dogwood season looks like the blooms are probably not going to be here much longer. I thought that might be a nice black and white subject matter. I just wish I wouldn't, wasn't having to shoot up on them so much. But there is a nice tonal difference between the white and the green. White blooms tend to do pretty well in black and white. <laughs> One of the things that draws me to the 645 medium format cameras is it's not a whole lot different than shooting 35 millimeter as far as using it in the field. The lenses aren't a whole lot bigger. The camera is not too bad. It's, I mean, comparatively speaking, it's it, it's on par with some of the some of the professional DSLRs. And I'm so used to working that way that it, with uh, it, the ability to change lenses quickly and move fluently through the landscape. Sometimes I take it might take that for granted. Uh, if I if I move up to large format, I'm gonna have to slow down even more. I'm not really sure I want to slow down anymore. It's not really about working slow, and the amount of shots you get per roll is is, is awesome, and it's just much more affordable. I'm gonna have to think long and hard before I before I decide to pull the pull the trigger on going large format or adding that to my my, uh, my gear. There's no sense adding something that I'm not gonna use that much. A lot of my photography heroes when I was younger um, used 35 millimeter. And they also shot landscapes. Galen Rao comes to can, comes to mind. Art Wolf. They've done some wonderful work in 35 millimeter. I like the idea of having a little more potential for image quality with the a little bit bigger negative. Well, it's quite a big negative actually. It it, it does it doesn't even compare to large format. But what I get with medium format is the ability to switch between focal lengths uh, much much quicker. And there's just a lot more focal lengths I can use. A lot of cameras are limited on how wide they can go, just on bellow length, um, how long they can go, the bells may be long enough. And this when you either go super wide or super or just moderate telephoto on large format. It adds a lot more complexity to the shooting. This having this time off, kind of at home, has, has made me think a little bit. I just did a, a gear video and was was saying I might. I was kind of thinking about wanting large format, but now that I'm out shooting, 
with my uh, media format. I'm wondering if that's not really something I need. Just really something that I think I should have because I shoot landscape and nature. But I, the way I shoot, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. Well, I've got about a frame or two left on the roll. I haven't really seen much that strikes my fancy. I might look for a detail shot on the way back to the car. But I think I'm going to end today's video right here. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for uh, joining me on this, on this outing. I haven't been out for a while. It's been nice to get out. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.